Last time on Square Roots, our adventure goes to the dogs. No bones about it, things get rough. We rover on over to a mining planet, and bingo, we fetch the tablet. Bark, 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 there's a puppy. Hi, and welcome to Square Roots. I'm your host, John Sleepy Boy Brandon. And with me is the talented Mr. Van Zant. Hi, my name is Matthew. Oh, Matthew yeah. Matthew Van Zant. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Also with us is the irreplaceable, the irreducible, conversational Vanessa. You can't reduce me. Either in physical size with your predatory dietary supplements and programs, or in value or importance by attacking my self-worth. I'm Vanessa. Wow. Vanessa just came out of the gates swinging. Who are you so riled As... up at today, Vanessa? What now? <laughs> Why are you so riled up today? Oh, uh, I'm riled up. Because it's November, and you know what that means? It's time to get out the vote. Put on your little shoesies and walk to the polls. Except when this comes out, it already will have been voting, so... Yeah, also, I don't believe in voting, guys. Like, I prefer that we don't ever talk about, like, politics on the show, because I don't vote, and I don't know anybody that votes, and I think that voting is what's really wrong with this country. Oh, okay, so the podcast is over. Uh, thank you for being a listener for these many years. Uh, we appreciate it. Bye! You know, I just realized, Vanessa... What's that? This is, like, almost the halfway mark of, of this uh, current administration <laughs> almost. in the United States. You could almost say that's wow. why they call it the midterm elections. Wow! It does... It feels like it's been 10 minutes and yet also 40 years. Well, you know, depending on how you look at it, John, it could be the quarter mark instead of the halfway mark. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't know. Move to Canada. And sh Vanessa has her fingers crossed. So what do we do on this show? Uh, well, we play a chunker of a classic RPG uh, each episode. Or you could say we play a classic RPG one chunker at a time. Mm. There it is. Why are you like twisting a game up club. our little catchphrase thingy? I'm a sleepy bear. <laughs> bear. Uh, we play a classic RPG one chunker at a time. It's like a game club for your, for instead of books, it's like a book <laughs> report. Jesus Christ, John. <laughs> it's like a book report, except instead of playing a dumb book, we're playing a video game. Yeah, I'm playing it's a like dumb book. A let's play for your ears. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, and only uh, your ears. Get the fuck out of here, eyes. Podcast not for you. <laughs> Stop trying to taste me. What? Well, there's other senses, too. I got where she was going with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, we are playing a game called Rogue Galaxy. This is part five, so if you'd like, you should probably go back to part one of Rogue Galaxy and, and start there. However, you don't have to. Yeah. You can listen to, uh, whatever you like. Um, maybe you are a big fan of this section of going through the towers and the Libra dungeon mm -hmm. and the lion dungeon mm -hmm. and the cancer dungeon. Mm -hmm. Rogue Galaxy Chapter 8, The Pinnacle of Video Games. Oh, boy. Is it ever. Before we do that, we like a little segment called Level Up. Vanessa, how did you level up today? I went to an escape room, as I what? do from time to time. Yeah, you've had, this is a... We've had this level up before. Well, you know... We've been doing this show for about two years, and people are creatures of habit. Eventually, I'm going to do something I've done before. And Vanessa, what level of escape room expert would you say you are? Well, this particular escape room was a 8 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. And it was a room for 8 people, 
but we only had three because I only have two friends. And <laughs> uh, every time I've yeah. done an escape room, it's not it's only been the people that I showed up with. Yeah, there weren't any other strangers there, which is good because um stranger yeah, danger. Yeah. And I, I've done it before with uh different people and it's like it's fine if you're outgoing and willing to like jump right into being a team. Um but if you're not then people just end up kind of working independently and there's not communication and it's lame. So uh, what we did is we woke up in the morning. We felt like, hey, it's escape room day, right? And checked online and there was one starting in like two hours that nobody had booked. And we figured we'd be pretty safe booking it with just three people. Uh, so that's my escape room tip. So I guess I'm a super <laughs> expert. Uh, it was a really good room. It was uh, uh, solving a mystery about what happened to this disappeared feller uh, who married a woman whose previous three husbands had died in mysterious accidents. Uh, it was fun. It had pretty intuitive puzzles. We did end up using all of our hints. And every time we used one, it just kind of turned out that we had been over-focusing on one spot. Whereas we should have been looking around for other ways to make progress, sort of like you do in a video game. You know, people get stuck. They're like, oh, I have to get through this door. Where's the key card? Where's the key card? And it turns out you can just climb up over the wall and get through that way. So take a breath, look around, uh, consider elements of the room that you haven't interacted with, and maybe those can help. Escape rooms. Can you climb over a wall? I don't know if I could climb over a wall. Uh, how high the wall? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, that was just an example. That's not something that happened in this escape room. Oh, okay. I was like, wow, you're like Lara Croft again. No. <clears throat> Although there was a time where we had been in this room for a good, I don't know, 45 minutes and finally got this cabinet open, which we thought would be like the last element. And turns out... There was a door in the back of a cabinet and a whole nother room. Oh, no. So that was really fun. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it was great. I think and escape it turned rooms, out that you were the murderer the whole time? Um, You know, I, I went with uh, two other women and we were not necessarily unsympathetic to the uh, the woman who had murdered her husband's. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, just watch yourselves out there, man, because you might get murdered and no one's going to feel that sorry for you. No. <laughs> That's my it's level like a reverse up. Phantasmagoria. <laughs> it is like a reverse Phantasmagoria. Uh, yeah, escape rooms. If you haven't tried one, try it out. It is something that you need to find someone to go with you to. Although I suppose you could just sign up by yourself, but that would not be as much fun. Uh, but I bet if you live in an urban area, there are clubs and groups and things like that for people who are escape room enthusiasts. If you do not have someone who wants to go with you uh, in your existing social circle. John, how did you level up? I'll tell you how I leveled up. Well, please do. Okay. I leveled up with um, what I would call self-restraint, because I have decided, uh, I was like, hey, you know, I've been working a lot, I have some extra cash, maybe I should buy a video game. Mm -hmm. So I went and I was like, ooh, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is out on Switch, and I don't have any Switch games I super love yet, so maybe yeah. I should download that. Wasn't it on sale or something recently? It's not yet. It just came out last or the end of September. I bet it will for Black Friday. But anyway, I looked at the game and I saw that it had a demo. I was like, okay, John, I will download the demo. And if I finish the demo, then I'll buy the whole game. Because that means I have time to play a video game because it's like four hours long. Mm -hmm. I have not bought that video game. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized any game with a demo, this is a great way for me to actually figure out whether or not I will put time into it. Yeah, that's a really good idea, John. Yeah, use demos as a, do I have time and interest in playing this right now? Here's a question. 
Uh, uh-huh. I haven't played a demo of a game in a very long time. Do these mm-hmm. modern demos allow you to sort of save your progress through the demo? And then if you do choose to buy the main game, uh, jump in with that demo portion already completed? Most of the JRPGs do. That's nice. American demos are bad, but Japanese demos are the best. Oh. Well, that seems very uh, considerate to the consuming audience. Yeah, which is weird for JRPGs. Usually they're like, well, oh, screw you. Here's a 50 hour mini game that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, especially on the Switch, like, yeah, every game demo I've played has let you uh, take your save games. Oh, that's over. really nice. Yeah. And uh, so I played it a little bit. It looks really nice and runs well on the Switch, which is uh, what I was nervous about. I was worried mm-hmm. it might run like poop compared to the PS4 version. And otherwise, I haven't done anything super exciting. Hmm. I I was home late from work for Halloween, so I got one Halloween uh, visitor, and I wore the spooky mask that Josh Hass made for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Kefka mask. <laughs> and the, so it was like a teenager because it was like eight p.m. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Trick or treat!" Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> that was his reaction to it. <laughs> it was fantastic (laughs) i also gave out candy i wore a headband with sparkly devil horns on it Mm -hmm. and uh had a good time looking at the kids in their costumes there was one little boy dressed as naruto Mm -hmm. and i said oh it's naruto and he's like oh you're the only one who's known what i am and i was like believe it i didn't Mm -hmm. actually say that i thought it would be too dorky and I'm always afraid of frightening children by showing an interest in their interests, uh, because I don't want to be a creepy adult. My my plan for the mask was to not speak at all and just to like mime everything, mm-hmm. because that's super creepy with that mask, mm-hmm. the uh, the Kefka mask. But uh, I I did it with that guy. But <laughs> yeah, I also had I had a. Uh, a girl who maybe was 12 or something like that, and she had come last year in the same costume. I didn't know what it was then, and I still do not know. It's a oh. green cape with some kind of symbol on the back of it. And mm. uh, she was with a younger friend, and she was like, clearly wanted the candy, but was just at the point where she didn't want to seem uncool about it. So she was just like, hi, and like held out her bag. <laughs> I'm like, cool. I, I see you. We're just like, you know, having an adult exchange. It's not a <laughs> trick or treat. It's just like, you know, you're here. You can have some candy. It's cool. Bye. Matthew, friend, Matthew, how did you? Oh, he just appeared through a cloud of smoke like a real <laughs> oh, wow. Jared. What an amazing trick. <laughs> oh, there's his Fushigi balls. Put those away. <laughs> Put your balls away, Matthew. And uh, Matthew, how did you? Level up. Well, I have watched yet another Netflix show that I want to talk to you about, and it's yet another show that neither of you have watched and probably have any interest in watching. So it's going to be like pulling teeth to talk to you about it. So is it Sabrina? John and Vanessa. Is it apartment makeover? What can you tell me about your history with a Castlevania? Oh. Well, I know all about this. Mm. Uh, Castlevania be a side-scrolling game uh, from the Super Nintendo era, probably, and it has a guy, Mm. and he has some kind of whip, Mm -hmm. and it's possible his name is Dante. Uh, No, wait, that's Devil May Cry. Well, it's still possible that Castle... Is his name... Is he a Van Helsink? Is that what the deal is? Because he's always going after them vampires, and he jumps up and down. my head. And he whips bats with his whip, and then he gets to the end, and Dracula's there, and he's like, You have been into my castle, Dante Van Helsink. What and, is a man? Mm-hmm, a and then filthy you... pile of secrets. Miserable. Oh. Miserable. A miserable little pile of secrets. Not not little. There's no little. A miserable pile of secrets. Thank you. So that's Castlevania. There have been um, probably four entries in the Castlevania game series. Hmm. And 
people <laughs> probably play them. The end. John? Yeah. Uh, well, I played Castlevania, my friend Lee DeGuire's Nintendo. He's on the Facebook group now. We were friends when I was very little. And uh, I also played Castlevania 3. Uh, I remember renting that for him on his birthday one time. I mean, with my parents' money. And uh, I liked them a lot. I thought they were super hard and really cool. And then I, I played a lot of Super Castlevania 4, which was really fun, and Castlevania Bloodlines, which I was really good at. That's like the only Castlevania I've ever been good at. Uh, maybe it was easy or something. Uh, Is that the played... Genesis one? Yeah. I don't think I've played that. I really am interested in it. I played the Virtual Console version of Rondo of Blood, which was cool. Uh, I played some of Symphony of the Night, but I'm very bad at that game. But we'll have Best to play game it ever sometime made. for this podcast. Uh, but I have never seen an anime about Castlevania, but Julio, friend of the podcast, says that season two is amazing. I watched a show on Netflix called Castlevania, and it is a television animated adaptation of Castlevania 3. For some Starring reason. Dante. Starring Trevor Belmont. What? Alucard. <laughs> and what? Cypher. Um, Dracula? And a lot of Dracula. Also starring Godbrand, who was amazing. What was the name of the actor that was the psychiatrist in Until Dawn? The game we Peter just Stormare. did. So, Peter Stormare plays Godbrand, a Viking vampire. <laughs> oh. And, is uh, this an anime? So, what this is, is a... Anime? I no. Define an anime. This is not a Japanese cartoon. This is written by comic book writer Warren Ellis. It's mm -hmm. an American produced production, but I imagine that the animation is done overseas because it is for most animated things mm -hmm. these days. However... It does look artistically just like an anime. Okay. okay. Is I'm it an go anime? Make some coffee. I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I, I can never. I, for me, it's like TV shows like that fall into two animated TV shows fall into two camps. They either kind of look like uh, Batman the animated series or like an, an anime. Yeah. And this one's on more on the anime side. It definitely looks like an anime. I don't think you would be wrong to call it an anime, but um, I don't think you would be right to call it an anime. I think we can just call it a animated show on Netflix, and it is super awesome and good. I watched the first season several times, uh, and I've watched the second season twice because it's super great. It's also super short. They're like 25-minute episodes, and the first season is only four episodes, and the second season is only eight episodes. But anyway, it's great. And listeners, season two just came out. And if you have any interest in checking it out, you definitely should because it's got all sorts of great monstery, gross horrorness and super cool, fighty, punchy action, but also a lot of character development and drama and heart. And, huh. uh, I will give you a, no. And uh, uh, most people, I think, uh, shared similar reactions as, like, having uh, uh, moments of the show that made them cry. And it's very oh. emotional. And it ends on a very sad, grief-stricken note that is very profound. Not profound, but very um, interesting. So, yeah. I know that I can't really convince you two to watch an I, anime. I, I might actually watch that one. Um, that sounds pretty cool. It is really great. The first season's more kind of just gets right to the point action. And then the second season takes the time to step back and, and it's a real slow burn as you spend a lot of time with Dracula and you get to know his generals. There's a little bit of political intrigue there that seems like it would be terrible, but it's pretty entertaining because it's got crazy voice actors as <laughs> it's got Godbrand and uh, it's been picked up for a third season. So, uh, yeah. Netflix's Castlevania is awesome. Uh, I, one time, uh, a, uh, guy I was dating back in 2006 or something lent me his copy of Dawn of Sorrow because I wanted to try it. 
and it started off in like 2035 Japan. Uh huh. And it was so, it was starring some character named like Luca or something. Soma. I was just, Soma, that's it. And I was just so confused as to what yeah. the heck was going on. Does it tie into any of that stuff? No, it does not. So, uh, this one is based loosely on Castlevania 3, uh, oh. for the original Nintendo which was mm-hmm. actually a prequel. So this is I believe canonically the first uh the f- this is the beginning. So that's the one with Richter and no. Alucard. This is Trevor. And- oh, Trevor. Richter oh, shows right. up at the beginning of Symphony of Symphony of the Night. This does not And Rondo this has Blood. Alucard, but Alucard is also in Castlevania 3. Yes. So yes, this is and not Symphony girl. of the Night. Um Who's the girl? Saifa is the girl in this. I believe in, if you're thinking of Symphony of the Night and Richter, you're thinking of Marie or Maria. I think of the girl who was in three as the playable character. Saifa. Saifa. Okay. She's in this. She's awesome. Huh. Well, um, I, I want to watch it. Yeah, so, it's really so great. There. And uh, um, Dawn of Sorrow. Yeah, I have not uh, played much of that. I've played a little bit of almost all of them. But because it was on the Game Boy Advance, it was just too small. I couldn't. I still can't. It's that just too small. That was a DS small. one. Yeah. No. Is it? Which one is that yeah. then? Donna Sorrow? That's There's the DS. two that starred There's that Soma Kid that take place in the of, future. And I don't Aria really of know. something. Harmony of Dissonance. No. Yeah. Aria of Sorrow. Yeah. Circle of Harmony the Moon. Harmony of that Dissonance. Was like- Circle of the Moon. You can get all those on Wii U if you want. Um, they are, uh, all semi-sequels to Symphony of the Night, which is interesting. Right. Um, anyway. Mm, hot coffee. All right. Vanessa is back. I, we can stop vamping about Castlevania. So why don't we, uh, move Go on to, to our log? next segment, which in this season is called The Frog Log. Ribbit. Ribbit. The frog log. Ribbit, ribbit, I'm a frog. Ribbit, ribbit, feed me your weapons. Ribbit, ribbit, chomp, chomp, chomp. Ribbit, ribbit. But if I can bind these weapons, you won't have anything to equip. And then that goes on for like <laughs> six levels. And you're like, can I just get yeah. a new weapon for this fucking character? I've bought everything in the game. Yeah, combine <laughs> it and then I'll equip that. Yeah. Come on, y'all. the late game these these things kind of start to fall apart because you don't ever have what you need Mm. so let's talk about that john let's talk about rogue galaxy all right a long time ago in a galaxy far far away was a boy named jaster Mm mm-hmm jazz meanwhile jazster (laughs) girl is standing on the deck of the Dorgan Goa. Yes, we've just left the mining planet with our new dog. Woof, woof. And uh, Lilica is standing behind her as Girl winces in pain mm-hmm. and turns translucent. Yeah. Um. You know what? This is really upsetting for me because mm. it is implying that Girl is a ghost uh, what I did not know was a ghost, and if Rogue Galaxy is going to play me like that, then we are going to have some words. My only hope now is that she's actually a hologram or has some other kind of translucency disease, but mm. I will not be tolerating any ghosts. I mean, having the memories of the kid implanted in the robot is already pushing it. Once if someone's changing the future and her parents no longer ex- or her parents don't meet and have sex. That's totally fine. Like okay. I'm all for it. Do it. Whatever. Okay. But uh girl does not seem that upset about it, just kind of embarrassed that Lilica saw it. And Lilica doesn't seem that upset about it either. She's just like, Are you feeling okay? Mm-hmm. Which is a normal thing to say to someone who is fading away from existence <laughs> <laughs> before your eyes. She's like, yeah, it just happens every so often. It's fine. Mm-hmm. 
I, I saw the animation for the 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 stench attack again today. Oh, did you? Yeah, me too. <laughs> her girl was was wiping herself with her dad's sock, and she just looks so happy. You know, it's it's totally possible that she's just holding it behind her back as a surprise. It's a, okay. Okay, maybe I am misreading that animation. (laughs) 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 I mean, holding it behind her back right where her butt is and sort of wiggling it up and down. But Uh nonetheless. Uh (laughs) All right, so that's our our first piece of character development for Girl. And uh, we've got these three ruins to attempt to get through. And Jupus says, hey, we should try the one in on uh Zer- Zerard. So I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Lupus or uh, Jupus. Mm-hmm. Lupus. Jupus. No, Jupus. He's not the disease of a thousand <laughs> faces. <laughs> so uh we get to the front gate of the tower and it's got like a weird protection field on it. And Steve is like, allow me to try to turn this off. And he, he does it but his circuits are frying a little bit. It's it's too hard. Mm-hmm. He has something called, was it overdrive mode? Yeah. Overflow mode. And he's like, uh, I just have to ask Dr. Pistachio if I can do this. And so we get a quick, at least we didn't have to walk to the factory. I was happy about that. But a quick cut to the factory and Dr. Picaccio is like, oh, I don't know about that. It could fry your circuits, Steve. Mm-hmm. And and there's one special little boy he has to ask before he can do it. Yeah. And the doctor says, I think, oh, it's not up to me. And Steve's like, who's it up to then? <laughs> so our favorite boy with a hat, Mark, comes out and he's like, oh, this would be ever so much fun. I would love to go into the tower and help my friends, no matter the cost. I don't think he talks like that, but... In my head, he does. Yeah, basically. Dr. Focaccio's like, all right, Mark, if you're sure, this might permanently erase you if anything goes wrong. So basically, what's happening here is uh, if we use whatever this superpower is that Steve has, it might permanently erase Mark. And this moment of tension uh, is totally just blown by. This terrible scene where it's all handled like a polite conversation between a ghost and his father. This is the Mm -hmm. dumbest game that we've ever played. (laughs) Nothing tops this. Mm. So we go back to the, uh, the twin towers. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's great. Just keep calling them that. We're not, we're not going to make those jokes. Nope. (laughs) We, 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 we didn't in Grandia and we won't now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of, RPGs have we twin did towers in Grandia, in and you edited it all out. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> in fact, it was so bad that you were very concerned about releasing that episode. Mm. We get to these towers, and then uh, uh, Steve uses his overdrive mode, and his eyes flash, and he begins to take down the force field. Mm-hmm. Have you guys gotten any of Steve's uh, extra costumes yet? Yeah, I got the one with, like, big diamonds on it. Right now, my Steve is, like, violet purple. He looks amazing. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that sounds nice. And my Lilica is basically wearing a red leather bikini now. Oh, no. <laughs> I think Anytime I've... I get a new costume for somebody, I just put it on them. Yeah. I got a pirate costume for Jaster that, like, it's red, it's black and blue and he's got a red headband. It looks really sharp. I like it a lot from the waist up. Uh, and from the waist down, he's got on like shorts and stockings and it's t- and these pointy shoes. And it's <laughs> terrible. I need to look around for some more costumes because all I have is... Yeah, we never is... talked about the first costume we found. Jaster's fun little feathered jungle outfit. Yeah, yeah I still it's, have him in that. It's a cultural appropriation outfit. Is it a halter top? <laughs> Uh, sure, a lot of lot of male halter tops in this game, which I endorse. <laughs> and uh, I got uh, Simon a a a body or like a a factory worker bodysuit. Yeah, that is very he's a too you. for me. <laughs> uh, I got for Zegram. I got a cool furry coat. 
Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He, he has like, the I furry coat. He looks great. I I also bought some shields for the first time. Yeah, I bought Is a it? whole bunch of those at Waterworld. Oh, I'll have to get some more. There's only three, so I bought the three I could get at the time, but I'll, I'll go to Waterworld. And- yeah, I bought a bunch of those, too. They, all they do is help with your defense in certain uh, against certain elements. It's not amazing. Okay. Um, if there's anything that helps prevent being dazed, that seems, like, ideal. Yeah, that seems like it would be a good one. In this next dungeon, I, I think in all these dungeons, there's enemies, if you're not blocking, will, that will do, like, 50% damage. If they get two hits on you, they'll get you to one HP. Mm-hmm. And that stinks. I didn't have that ha- problem. Oh, I, had I that sure problem did. All the time. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. I got, in fact, I'm just going to spoil this whole episode. Pretty early on in the first dungeon that I did, which is, was Veda or whatever. Uh, Vidon, what's the planet? Vidon, yeah. I leveled up enough to and unlocked a something in the revelation flow called Supernova, which is mm-hmm. a. Uh, Tree, it's a triple attack from Jaster, Kiss, what's her name? Kisala? Kisala and Kisala Zegram. and Zegram. And it basically one hits everything. Yes. So that's, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the missile, missile barrage and the, uh, ICI and those kill everything mm-hmm. as well. So, uh, yeah, if, if, as soon as you start unlocking level three abilities, this becomes a lot easier. And I, cause I was trying to fight my way through it and there's so many enemies that will just do one, uh, two hit kills on you. Or th- well, it's three hit kills, mm-hmm. but they can do it very fast because you get dazed and then they can just combo you. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever mentioned that the health potions in this game, uh, your sort of basic one heals 50% of your, mm-hmm. whatever your hit points are, which I kind of like because then you don't have to have like, Health potion one, health potion two, health potion yeah. deluxe or whatever. Yeah. I have a bunch of health potions, and then there's also one called a max heal that mm-hmm. is not much more expensive than the health potion. And I, I have yep. a bunch of those, and I have to have you always have to have a bunch of recharge drinks, which uh, the mana in this Perfect game, heals. the recharge drink, just a hundred percent refills it every time. There's no yeah. levels to it; it just always works, and they're cheap, so mm-hmm. uh, I always keep. As many of those on hand as possible, because I'm going to be spamming my my <laughs> massive attacks at the start of every battle. Mm-hmm. That said, you do have to go through a lot of health potions in your typical boss battle. Yeah. Yes, but I, I've set I've set all my my people to use all your attacks and potions because why not? Yeah, me too. Because <laughs> it's just the easiest way to get through this game. So that's a good uh, idea. You- the later the bosses. For all four of these stages, I beat the exact same way, which is that I used Supernova on them about ten times in a row. I did not, but I'll tell you how I did it uh, when we get there. All right. So we're doing the towers first? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did first. Yeah. That's what I did first. I decided to do the uh, Vaden planet first, but regardless... Steve uses his newfound magic powers that might just kill the ghost that lives inside of him to undo <laughs> that he doesn't know the about. gate on this lock, which amounts to him putting his hands on it and grunting really loud, which that's not how computers work. Nope. And his eyes flash, which is like a little hard drive reading light. And uh, we get inside and we're immediately greeted by a talking sword. Yeah, that was it's weird. It's the Libra King. Mm-hmm. And Libra King is upset because his two sons uh, battled each other during life for the throne, and now they're dead. I guess they don't know that they're dead, and so they're still battling. Oh. Yeah, how do they not know that they're dead? They're a ghost that don't know they're a ghost. (laughs) But we know they're a ghost, so it's Yeah, Yeah, they don't scare me. So Sword Daddy is like, Sword help my Daddy. sons, uh, tell them that I want them to be happy and I'm sorry and let's just uh, come come back and hang out with me in like heaven yeah. or whatever. Please use me to kill them. Outside of time. And you're also surrounded by floating souls of all the people from yeah, the two towers. Yeah, they look like little flame balls. Yeah. And they're like hovering around you. And one of the first souls you meet that actually talks to you is Burton. Yeah. That was upsetting. Our good friend Burton, who I guess is just dead. 
but <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, he. Ugh, mm. He so he's like, oh yeah, I ran into a beast and I guess it killed me. Whoopsie! But he's okay he seem with too that. Worried about it. He's happy actually. Yeah, because he doesn't have to worry about beasts now because he can just like float around and look at uh, ancient clues, mm-hmm. which is cool. Also, right after we talked to Sword Daddy, Zegram is like, hold on a second, I got to make a phone call. And he like walks behind a pillar and is like, hey Norma, these idiots are are about to find the leaper scale. Norma? That's who he's been calling? Norma? Yeah, uh, who what? is Norma now? Okay. Missile tits. Oh. Missile, missile tits. Yeah. Rocket Remember? front parts lady with the the, the bull's eyes. Yeah, that was she a has bad... sort of those 1950s uh conical breasts. Mhm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's got glasses and pink hair. That's right. Red hair. I yeah. do remember her. I did not remember that her name was Norma. Her name is Norma. And Zegram uh, is on in cahoots with her. Well, this is shocking news. I mean, it's not. We know that he was talking to somebody. Yeah, and there are only so many characters in the game, so I guess it's not that shocking. Yeah. We knew he was going to betray us eventually. So what comes next is about 36 hours of walking through stone corridors and fighting wave after wave of enemies. It would be difficult to overstate how unnecessarily long this dungeon is. (laughs) Especially because you get to the top, fight the boss, and then it's like, okay, now go to Tower 2 and do it that way. Yeah, which Tower 2 aesthetically is exactly mm-hmm. the same as Tower One. Uh, it's, well, one's kind of goldish and one's kind of silverish, oh, right? Oh, so different! And yes. and it, it, it basically you start on Tower One too. and keep crossing over. So you're doing like Tower One, Floor One, Tower Two, Floor Two, mm-hmm. Tower One, Floor Three, Tower Two, Floor Four, and then you go back and do it the opposite pattern. Right. And yeah, one is goldy brownish and one is greenish. Yeah. Silverish. And I think this <clears throat> might count as the worst dungeon we've done, because it's about four hours yeah, long. Yeah, I would say so in just about just... any game that we've played, not yeah. just this game. But yeah, I am, I mean it. I mean, of the ones we've played for this podcast, I've played Miracle Warriors, so I know that worst dungeons exist. Uh, I would say this is uh, the worst mm-hmm. one, because it's boring, mm-hmm. and it's four hours long. Yeah, And it takes 7,000 years to get from every Across every room, mm-hmm. and if you have any sort of exploration or completionist bone in your body, you find yourself poking around in corners that take forever to get to and forever to get back from, and there's nothing there. Yeah. Or when there is, it's just like a fucking puzzle piece, and you're like, great. <laughs> so we get uh, close to the top and run into Seed. Yeah, our old pal, uh, bifurcated robot. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have just have a normal fight with him that he just was like, ah, oh, later, dudes, yeah. you guys Yeah, suck. and, like, it's you don't even beat him. You get him to, like, three-quarters health, and he's like, all right, bye. Yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, this sucks. And don't you mm-hmm. knock him off of a cliff here? No, that's uh, that's later. Yeah. Spoiler, he comes back. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then you get to the top. And, and the first boss is Gazelle. Mm-hmm. And it, this game does what this game fucking loves to do, which is to take a character that it has just introduced <laughs> and delve into their tragic backstory without developing that character at all in any other way. So it's just a long slog of cutscenes as this prince gets mad at you because, I don't know. He's sad. Because daddy didn't love him. Yeah. And then you're going to turn around. You're going to kill him. Now, I did it. I killed Prince. What were their names? There was Gazelle and. There's Gazelle and Logan. Logan. I killed Prince Logan first because I went oppositees. Oh, wow. And then I went to the second tower and killed Prince Gazelle. And Logan stepped in afterwards, and they, like, had their reunion that this game felt was necessary. (laughs) Yeah, for me, after I killed Gazelle... This unearned reunion that this game does not understand that I could not care less about. 
I killed Gazelle, and then he's like, oh, I see now that that sword is my father, and mm-hmm. I've, like, really dishonored him by fighting with my brother all the time, so go tell my brother that he can have the throne. And Yeah, and mm-hmm. he says, like, I wasn't good enough to be king. He's real yeah. upset. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to the other one, he's like, you're like, hey, your brother says you're king now, and he's like, tricks, trickery. You can't trick me. I'm going to kill you. Whoa. Yeah, well, both of them seem seem very unreceptive to your requests at first. Mm-hmm. And then you fight them. They're big. Uh, what was the one of them was like a big suit of armor. I think the other one was a big suit of armor. Yeah. yeah one's a gold suit of armor and one's a silver <laughs> suit of armor. <laughs> yeah. On the, the your second wave, uh, second turn through the towers, you you fight Seed again on, on a bridge and then Desert Claw intervenes. Oh, that guy. He's the dreamiest. He's all right. Well, he's got like burlap pants that are tied at the cuffs with ro- with rope, mm-hmm. which seems weird. So he he's a, he's an interesting guy. He never tells anyone why he's there. Yeah. But he does seem interested in us and what we are he doing. He is. Uh not so. interested enough to like explain anything. But no. uh interested enough that he's always around watching like a real creeper. He's like a tuxedo mask kind he of. Is. Yeah, he's got. He even kind of looks a bit like a tuxedo mask with his little goggles. Mm-hmm. And, and hat. he dives in to save the day, even though we didn't really need him to. No, I have not had any issues with Seed. This game is doing something, and a lot of games do this. I will not blame Rogue Galaxy for this, but it's doing that thing where you keep handily beating the crap out of some boss that then the cutscenes try to convince you is very tough, and you're like, "No, mm-hmm. I will kill you." Please, just let me end you. Seed, we would have done so much faster if you would have just died the first time. Yeah. So we get to the top and fight Logan, who is not an old man with clawy claws. He is a big purple dude. And um, if you want to fight for hours, just go ahead now. Oh. These two princes mm-hmm. uh, decide to unite and uh, go they're like we're gonna go out of time to see our father and oh, then like God. all the souls all the souls uh, that have been floating around these towers turn into care. like walk signs from you know traffic mm-hmm. lights they're all like surrounded it's super weird they're these just yellow little man figures yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, except for our friend uh, Norman, or whatever we want to say his name is there, uh, Burton. Uh, Burton. Yeah, Burton. Oh, yeah. Burton's fine. Burton comes back to life, and he's like, oh, God has brought me back to life. They must be really in support of what I'm doing. Yep. So I'll Burton keep at it. is super annoying. Yes. So have I don't remember. Have we learned about Burton's tragic backstory yet, or is that yet to come? No, no, not really. He says no. he, that money is no object, but I think he's like one of those British people that lies about being rich. So <laughs> who knows? I'm Lord Burton of uh, I mean, Devonshire. We're definitely going to find out that he's doing this to avenge his dead son or something, right? Because that's every <laughs> person in this game. Yeah. So you get you also get a teeny tiny little scale oh yeah the little libra symbol that we have tried so hard to get this tower took so long that i forgot why i was going up it in the first place (laughs) uh i didn't stream this part because it sucked so hard yeah so i i just like i was like i'm sorry i can't stream this i'm just gonna listen to a podcast Mm -hmm. or something and because it's so boring it is not good to look at and it is not good to play yeah so finally you go to vidan to get the cancer key. Now uh, you say finally, and but it's actually secondly because there okay. is a third part. Secondly, you go to Vidan to get this cancer key. People on the ship are like, "Hey, you should look for uh, underground passage." I was like, "Oh, where should I go?" But then I forgot. As soon as you get there, there's a big red arrow. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty no easy mystery. to find. Um, yeah. This one is going to take you to the Vidan ruins, which are underwater. Is it a sewer? Basically, well, we run in first. We run into some of those stormtroopers, and they're like, "Hey, mm-hmm. what are you doing over here?" And uh, 
Eye Patch Jekt is like, hey, Jester, let's kill them. And Jester's like, no, no, we can talk to them. <laughs> and the guard is like, you're under arrest. And then Jester goes, oh, I guess you were right. We better kill them. This is like every D&D campaign I've been in. And I'm always Jester in yeah. these scenarios. Like, Let's try to do some funny thing to get through it. And it's like, nope, they yeah. attack you. And then they're like, aw. So we killed the stormtroopers. Uh, they seal off the area. And so we're feeling pretty screwed. And then come a little boy. With a hat. With a hat. Another hat. And, then, and he's like, come here. I think here. this hat's worse. Come here, governor. Little hat boy. Come here. Come over here. But this one's not a ghost. <laughs> he's not a ghost. No. He's an orphan. He's, yeah, he's an orphan. He's a little street urchin. He's the head <laughs> of the street urchins. He's a real, what's his name? John, what's that kid's name? Tom Thumb. No, the one from Harry. Oliver, Harry who's like Harry. not Oliver, but he's the other one. Fagan. A real Phineas Herb. No, what? You know, Phineas Herb from Oliver. I, I haven't played David Copperfield or Oliver, whatever you're talking about. Watched, not played. Listen to Red. Ah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got there eventually. John is broken. <laughs> we cannot yep. decide what is a book and what is a video game. And that's just <laughs> the future, you know? <laughs> Write your Think Piece article about that. Because that's the way kids Thunk are pause. these days. The Artful Dodger. That's who the I'm thinking Artful of. Artful Dodger. Yes. Okay. This kid's a real artful dodger. From the book Oliver Twist. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a Baker Street irregular. <laughs> yes. Um, so Artful Dodger is like, Oi, governor, me and my friends live in this sewer. Here's our little <laughs> sewer home. And there are a whole bunch of kids down there. I guess they're mining orphans. Yeah, they don't actually talk like that, but don't worry. They should. They should. <laughs> and I They're all really a bunch got... of filthy little ragamuffins. Uh -huh. He's got more of a voice like this, I think. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I've got this friend down there, and his name is Borga, and he is master of the piano. He's a piano comedian. He's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, this kid is very concerned about his friend Borga. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. Borga's like... Master of the piano. Yeah, Borga's a man, huh? And he's like, no, Borga's a beast. Oh, but he's a friendly yeah. beast. Yeah, we're all shocked to learn that the little sewer boy has a Harry and the Henderson situation going on, mm -hmm. where he has a Yeti man that is his best pal that he uses to kill people that try to hurt his friends. Yes, and he it's lives dark, in as the sewers. Everything in this game is like a real mm -hmm. below me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Jim. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so, uh, and, and he, he, Borga, uh, we'll get to actually meeting Borga, but Borga looks like exactly like the creature from Labyrinth, a movie we'll never stop referencing. Yeah, like Ludo. Yeah. Borga friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real Ludo narrative dissonance. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, Just because so the game is bad doesn't mean we have to be bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we uh, we get through. I found this this one of all three of the dungeons took me the least amount of time. I think I just like ran through it pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's big, but it's sort of open, so you can go diagonally across the rooms rather than forced through all these corridors. And then you drop down a whole bunch of holes. So you go down and down and down and down. I, there's one, the first, after the first one, there's a big rough waterway that oh, you can't right. pass. Cause like, uh, cause girls like, oh, we would get swept up if we try to swim through that. And, and Steve's like, and my circuits wouldn't like it yeah, either. But, uh, happily, Harry the Hat Kid has given us a little bell, uh, like one would mm -hmm. use to summon your butler. And mm -hmm. ring my bell. Mm -hmm. Ring my bell. And it's great. You ring the bell, and he shows up with a box, like a, a sort mm -hmm. of package sized box. And he's like, Oh, this place. Yeah, you can't get across here. There's a lot of water. It was watery like this when I met Borga. That day, <laughs> I was swimming, and then I fell into the water. Uh, and Borga God. saved me. 
And from that day on, <laughs> boring it, and we see like still photos. So once again, of their this backstory. game did what this game loves to do, which is to introduce a character, <laughs> and then without yep. developing that character in any way, immediately jump into their tragic fucking backstory. <laughs> yeah, this game is the the worst. tale of the friendship <laughs> of Borga and Harry. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, and oh wait, I guess it really is a Harry in the it Henderson is, situation. Yeah, I yes. mean, he is. Ah. Except this time, Harry is the human, and the Hendersons is the monster. It's a real so. Doctor Frankenstein Frankenstein situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah while well, he's, he's telling this like story. stupid story, he's like sitting next to his box by the river. And then he's done with his story, and he's like, it's done! And the camera pulls back, and he has somehow out of this box <laughs> produced <Yep. laughs> a uh, like a rope bridge, which he has set mm-hmm. up and affixed to both sides of the canal. Yeah, it's professionally done. And all of the characters on your team are like, oh, does that look safe? And it's like, yeah, it actually looks like a professionally yeah. made bridge. And how like did he, he hired contractors yeah. to come in while he was telling you this story. How did he get over to the other side to even set it up on that side in the first place? Did he like have a gun that he shot the supports across <laughs> with? Why Does he notice? Spider-Man across the ceiling? And it definitely would not have fit in that box. So I figured this would be like a Zelda dungeon and we'd have to like do it three times and use like three different fun Harry inventions. But they're like, eh, we don't yeah, have time that. Yeah, that was it. Uh, we spent <laughs> all our it. resources into making these amazing two showers. And- it was mm-hmm. just an excuse to have him show up and tell you his tragic backstory. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I cannot take another fucking tragic goddamn backstory in this game well you're good one <sighs> yep at least no you get two more yeah. at i least mean we get another one pretty much episode. right away as soon as we go across <laughs> yeah. this bridge well no first you go down another pit and fight seed yeah seed is back and, and he's like this time i'm gonna kill you for real Mm-hmm. Uh, and this time I kicked him into a well. Yeah, he falls down a hole, and then I patch Jekt is like, I doubt that was enough to kill him. And it's like, thanks. Thanks for that game. Well, it's an anime. Yeah. Nothing kills bad guys until they're like, get 10 minutes to talk about their tragic their death. backstory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty well, tragic, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh,. Let's see. And then we go, what, walk through 75 miles of underwater corridors until we Uh get to... uh And then these big rooms, actually. This level is these gigantic rooms that you have to like, because there's treasure chests everywhere. Oh, it took me so long. I skipped the treasure chests, honestly. Me too. I was (laughs) so done. I was just like, no thank you. I bought some hunter licenses for Vidan because I was like, oh, why not? And one, I fought here. I fought Insector. Oh. A giant Insector. And, uh, oh, yeah, we haven't talked about fighting these bosses. So Matthew's technique w- was to spam Supernova. For me, I got whoever had a buff, like an attack buff, to use that. And then I used Illusion Sword. Just was like, hack, 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 mm-hmm. hack. And got cut through every boss in like 30 seconds. Nice. Illusion Sword is the best attack. Thank you for telling me how it works last episode, because now I just destroy bosses with it. Like, yeah. the witch lasted 20 seconds or something I don't something remember which that. planet I did it on, but somewhere in this chunker, I finally had a sword to feed to Desert Eagle, Desert Rose, that uh, upgraded it to, now it is called Earth Shaker, Ooh. I think. Yeah, I just got that, too. And it, it does, like, its base damage is, like, 373, which yeah. is the highest yeah. I have seen in the game. Yeah, I think it's, well, it's one of the seven legendary swords, so, you yeah. know, it's, there's, like, and oh, yeah, people have been telling me about Info Sword. I've been getting some, some, I think you have to talk to people. Info to Edge? It. Yeah. So I don't know what that's all about. Sometimes it will tell tell me, add it to your info edge. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And I guess I don't care. It's one of the seven legendary swords. Okay. If I have to make it in the factory, it's never going to happen. So, Yeah, that's the downside. Because I got the plans to one of the legendary swords, I think. But I'm like, I'm, I'm not making no. that. Oh, no. Factory is No, awful. thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, so we kick C down a hole, and then we get to, I guess, what is ostensibly the boss of this section. Uh, some. I mean, I just want to say, the factory is basically like whoever made the game was like, I want to make it as realistic as possible. Let's make these kids really understand what a fucking slog it is to figure out how to fucking make something and then get all the shit together and get it all in the right place and get it all plugged in properly and tested and working. Let's I make only sure watch the kids go through that. The workings of a factory. If a, a nice lady with a kind of Montreal accent tells me how things work and you'll be like, but how, how it's made has an um, a American man talking. And I'm like, well, in Canada, it's a Canadian lady. And then they redid the voiceovers for America for no what? reason. To have a more American-sounding person. It's bizarre. And a man it's just this lady, instead like, of a woman? Yeah, she's like, and this is how the – you can see that the crayons are made and like, oh, it's great. But then you have American dude like, ah, here's how the crayon are made. Oh, I hate everything. <laughs> I don't think you count. So. It's not the same thing, but that reminds me of the change between British kitchen nightmares and American kitchen nightmares. British Kitchen Nightmares was one of my very favorite shows where Gordon okay. Ramsay went and, like, helped these people get their business back in line and, like, redo their menu. And they would pay to, like, kind of redo the interior. And it was really nice. And sometimes he would get angry and stuff. But most of the time, it was just all very pleasant. And it was interesting. And then America Fox bought it. And made an American version, and that American version is just angry Gordon Ramsay with dramatic over music and narration. Mm -hmm. Next up, Gordon gets mad. The uh, what I'm the saying is episodes... Americanizing things ruins them. I saw the the episode. I think it was like a Louisiana chef, like he was like this big white bearded bear guy, uh, and he was so queer. And yet married, he's like, I love my wife. I'm super straight. Let's talk about my restaurant. Oh, you devil, you. <laughs> uh, if you've never watched the British version of that show, I strongly recommend it. It's a way different experience that's amazing and and pleasant. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to try that. There's a little too much yelling, but uh, but that, that super queer guy was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we get to the, so, the altar Digo. of the Cancer King, and at the altar of the Cancer King uh, is a uh, Ludo yeah. getting kicked by robots, mm -hmm. like jerk robots. They're just like stomping yeah. on him. Yeah, he's like already down, and they're still curb stomping him. And these are like the same robots that we saw in the Starship Laboratory. Which makes sense, because they're Datron robots sent to recover the artifact, I Can think. we just stop for a minute to talk about the fact that the big bad of this game is a corporation named Datron? Ooh, like, current. this mm -hmm. game is so Star Wars The Phantom Menace, it, like, makes my fucking head hurt. When did this come out, and when did Star Wars The Phantom Menace come out? Uh, 99, 98 or 99 for Phantom Menace, and this game came out in 2005. So it is. It's legitimately like Star Wars The Phantom Menace, the shitty yeah. JRPG. <laughs> Where, which, which of the, uh, I was thinking about this yesterday. Which of the prequels do you think is the worst? Mm, golly. Attack of the Clones. I, I would say Revenge of the Sith is the one I walk, wanted to walk out of. Ugh. I hated it. I think so that Revenge much. of the Sith, in retrospect, is at least watchable for its like action. Mm. I think that Attack of the Clones is terrible from top to bottom. Which and one's Phantom the Menace one is with so the bad, boy? But, like Phantom That's Menace is Phantom the one Menace. with the boy. That one's bad, but it has like some redeeming stuff. I don't know. The pod race is pretty cool. And the Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon fight at the end yeah. is legitimately one of the best action scenes ever committed to film. It also has the most Jar Jar and those, like, <laughs> racist space alien corporation yeah. people. And the, like, I mean, Jewish yeah, guy. All of them have uh, racist fucking... It seems all like of them the have most racist, racist aliens. But I, I think I like to attack the clones the most, which is not saying much. I just thought it was pleasantly dumb forgettable it didn't make me mad like i think 
the thing that made me the most mad about Revenge of the Sith was Princess Leia remembers her mom. They just went back and changed that plot line. So screw yeah, you, stupid George Lucas. Yeah, that was super weird because like it happened in the movie, and I'm like, wait a minute, she talks about her mother, like. Yeah, and that was a, a huge plot moment yeah, in Return and of the like, Jedi. She's like sharing with this guy she just found out, you know, or I guess she doesn't know yet, but sharing with this guy who she senses is her brother and, you know, having this moment. And then I guess George Lucas was like, oh, she was talking about her adopted mother. And it's like, yes. why would Luke Ugh. be asking about Ugh. that in that moment? It's like, no, he it clearly way wants more to know about his own mother. <laughs> And who dies of a broken yeah. heart. <laughs> <laughs> like women right, do. All right, enough Star Wars talk. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why Revenge of the Sith is the worst of the trilogy. So, Thank really, you uh, very much. All right. So we get to the Cantor Keen's throne room. Bro, Harry is getting stomped on by some robots. You Poor jump guy. in. And stomp on the robots for Harry, and then the Cancer King shows up and is like, Borga, my old faithful servant. Yeah, it's the ghost of the Cancer King. Be with me in hell. Yeah. And Borga dies Mm -hmm. in front of his little behatted best friend. They were both ghosts. Yeah, I guess. Well, I don't know. Was Borga a ghost? He he fades. No, I think think he dies. But doesn't he fade away? I thought he faded away with the king. Yeah, because the king well, yeah, like, takes him to away. wherever. Now, he's definitely, because mm. he's like crawling, wounded across the floor. And he's like, master, master. And the master of Borga is pulling the strings. <laughs> <laughs> and ghost of the Cancer King is like, yeah, it's me, your master. What's up? Uh, and then Harry is like pretty chill with it. He's like, oh, he looked so happy. I've never seen him happy before. I oh guess he God. wanted to go with his master. Mm, yeah, he had little hot, happy eyes when he was dying. Yeah. And oh, boy, poor Harry. Harry is wrecked by this. Yeah. He's, but he's real not, upset. Because Jaster turns around and he's like, I think this was all for the best, huh? And fucking Hat Boy is like, yeah, I'm really glad my friend Monster died. <laughs> And went he's to still hell crying. with his old master. Yeah. He's still crying, you monster. <laughs> I'm super glad he's dead. <laughs> and now there's no one to protect me and my friends, so I guess we'll just yeah, get and no, me and my friends are gonna get work. fucking killed. And I guess the cops like lost interest in us. <laughs> yeah, because we can just we leave. go back upstairs and they're just like gone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could just use teleporters anyways, so where was the problem? All we did was kill a few of their cop buddies. It does kind of yeah. make sense, actually, in the context of this world, that if you get out of sight of the cops, they just assume you're gone. Because you're probably teleported yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. So, finally, for real, finally, we go to Jerica. Yeah. We're oh, not shit, done there's yet. there's another one of these. Can we just, can we get through this one quickly? There, not Two much minutes. Happens. Describe it. <laughs> Okay, you run to the ruins, you get to the ruins, and Lady Gollum is there, who is the witch, and looks like Gollum with, like, a lady yeah, dress. Yeah, on your way to the ruins, there are a whole bunch of people. snake that she rides around on. The people on the way mm-hmm. are like, hey, there's a witch, better keep out of those ruins, there's a heckin' witch mm-hmm. up there. Uh, you meet Burton inside, and <laughs> Vanessa sent a screen cap of this, where <laughs> he's just like, uh, talking about how scary the ghosts are, and he's got his hands limp. I kind of want to use this as episode yeah. art. His hands are limp, and there's ghosts behind him, and he's like all green. Yeah, he's like it's underlit. <laughs> he's telling his ghost story, and he's like, yep. So, uh, the queen, sh- the queen of the kingdom has been corrupted by, a devil or something mm-hmm. people seem to know some about this uh you make it through this dungeon where i think you fight seed again oh yeah that's right right at the end you get to the witch but then seed attacks yeah. her oh but uh we don't want to gloss over the fact that we do run into uh chie and yuki <gasps> oh, oh yeah God damn it the mother and what child. What are they doing in the ruins <laughs> yeah. on Jerica? They are in the witch cursed ruins looking for daddy. <laughs> Why aren't they spending their travel budget on food? <laughs> yeah, they're clearly, I mean, they're getting around. 
But, yeah, but maybe they have like the equivalent of a yeah. bus pass. I mean, in their defense, uh, assuming that we're correct about um, not si- about Simon being the father, uh, they do go to all the right places. He's there. <laughs> And they're just crying so I much, know. and they're starving and to now death. So like, an interesting thing this game ruins. does is every every cut scene, all of your characters are there, or whoever they decide to have show up. So it's never like it's just you and the two other people in your party. It's always like the entire group is going through these areas right. together. And so, you know, Simon is there. Yeah. He must be there. This is like the yep. fourth fucking time he's seen his crying ass family <laughs> on a different planet, planet looking for him. Yeah. It's just insane. And once again, we do not provide them aid or <laughs> tell them nope. to get out. We're just like, I what are they so doing much there? money right now. Do I have you? more money than I, I could yeah, have so like 80,000 gold. I've run out of things to buy. Oh, well, aren't you just Mr. Moneybucks? Uh-huh. So, yeah, they're so, in there. Um, despite the fact that the witch has proclaimed that she will kill anyone who enters, uh, we also run into a guy who's just selling some potions. So the witch, you know, she's all talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's tons of people inside this dungeon. Seed is in there. Uh-huh. So Seed and the witch fight, and the witch throws some tornadoes at him. And Seed gets blown away. Yeah, presumably to the land of Oz. Oh, no. Uh, Well, yeah, witch, that's thematic. Mm -hmm. So then you fight the witch, and uh, basically I charged up my illusion sword with, like, Zegram's drinky drink and destroyed him. Like, it destroyed her in seconds. Mm Mm-hmm. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, I did what I did with all of them, which is I just used... Supernova like 10 times in a row, and then she was dead. Yes, I did the same it was, thing. It was super easy. So, uh, and then maybe one of the most goddamn insane things yeah. that I've ever I seen in a video this. game happens. It's the only, the only good part of this episode or this chunker is seeing Chie and Mitsuru and yeah, this part. She has been, the witch has been going on about how. You can't take my everything from me. I'm guarding my treasure. I'll protect the Leo King. Uh, Leo King, Leo King, Leo King. She's all about him. Ah, yeah, my name is <laughs> uh, Yeah, so she is ostensibly defeated, and she crawls her way to what looks like a, uh, a crypt. Um... And peeks inside. <laughs> and who wants to say it? You can say There's it. There's a Go on. fucking baby. <laughs> it's a baby. It's, it's me, a lion little king. baby king eyes. <laughs> little <No>. baby dead eyes. <laughs> and it's, even though this is like a thousands year old ruin, he's been protected the whole time. By a mother's sacrifice. Yep. He is a preserved baby. Uh, he's not dead. He is just hanging out. And uh, she, so the mother was there looking at her baby and gets stabbed in the back by yeah. Seed. <laughs> Seed is back and Seed is like, oh, hey, a nice baby you got there. Shrink. <laughs> and we're like, well, why would you even do that? What's wrong with you? He's like, well, she she was dying anyways. You're the ones who kill, uh, were killing her. I just ended it. Yeah, he's like, I and just he ended her suffering. Mm-hmm. It was a mercy killing in front of her baby. We have resurrection potions. Yeah. <laughs> she would have been fine. And it seemed like whatever corruption had infected her was gone. She didn't look like Gollum nope. anymore. Um, so she dies in front of her baby. precious... Yeah, the whole party Gets like passed sticks off their to an orphanage in Jerica, which is great. Yeah. Congratulations, baby! <laughs> they like you the got whole protected party... for a thousand years by a ghost, and now you're gonna go get ra- raised in the caveman village. Yeah. I'm really excited for they you. They gather round and they look at this baby, and the baby smiles and reaches out his chub chub baby arms, and they're oh. like, "So this is the Leo King." Uh, oh, and then Jester sort of reaches towards the baby. And the baby glows and then produces mm-hmm. the final key piece that we need mm-hmm. uh, and gives it to Jaster. 
So we uh, we grab that line, the final piece. Uh, and we snatch that we, kid. Yeah, we take the kid, I guess, which makes sense. And it's, so do we talk about how the mom basically sacrificed herself? She killed herself to become a demon to protect the baby. Yeah. Basically, she... And I guess that's what the snake was. Yeah, she knew that the kingdom was going to fall. Uh, she had the snake on her back like a cum guardian. And mm -hmm. she uh, turned herself into a demon so her baby would be baby forever. And she knew this was evil because she's like, oh, evil ones, please help me. So there's a tra there's a, your third tragic story, mm -hmm. Matthew. The most tragic you got of Borga, all. Borga uh, staying as a ghost to protect his king. You got her. You got the two princes. Just go ahead now. And uh, you, as you, <laughs> you exit, you exit the, uh, the ruins, uh, desert, desert claws, like they've got all three relics. Everything's going according to plan or something. I don't know. And also, as you leave, uh, the, the, the witch lady gives a super ghostly goodbye wave. Mm -hmm. She's cool with being stabbed. She was fine with all yeah, this. Yeah, and Jester turns around and sees her, and then girl is like, oh, what are you looking at? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. He gets all coy and about it. that's it for this chunker, right? I believe we nope. make it to a save point, and then we <laughs> and save then... the game and turn it off. Nope. You Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> we got some ghost boy talk time. Before you can turn off your game. Dr. Mm. Picaccio is worried about Mark. And Mark's like, Father, I feel so sleepy. Oh, no. Yeah. I guess going into Superdrive has overloaded Mark's mm -hmm. circuits. So then uh, Ghost Boy sort of fades away. And uh, Mark busts, uh, or I guess Steve at this point bust Dr. Focaccio, because he's like, Dr. Focaccio? How did I get here? What is happening? I must have been sleeping. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get that checked. He's like, yeah, that's a very unusual Yeah, thing. he tells Steve that Steve should power his circuits off occasionally to give them a rest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe Mark is dead? Do you think we're going to get one more meanwhile? I'm guessing one more I mean, meanwhile. Mark is definitely dead. Uh, oh, yeah. Chapters are left in this game. 9, 10, 11, 12. All right. Well, good news for next time, ladies and gentlemen, because Matthew played a little ahead, and I just want to warn you that shit is about to go disc three crazy <laughs> yes. up in this fucking wait. game. I played a little ahead <laughs> as well, and it it almost made the slog through this section worth it to see how... <laughs> absolutely bananas it gets in what? the next bit oh i can't wait please do stream <laughs> this next part john so we can yes. all okay. experience your For reactions sure. should we play nine and ten in water world i don't know how long ten is I, well why don't we play nine and ten and i've done water world the it's halfway done with it so just do it when you can john and we'll talk about it when we can Okay. Yeah. We'll play nine Water and ten. World, we didn't mention it very much. Uh, as you're doing these other quests, you get a little message that uh, you can now go visit uh, Water World, which is the resort planet, sort of like uh, mm -hmm. what's it called in Star Trek? A beach episode. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like you know that it's populated only by fish-headed people. Are you talking about, Riza? Talking people about people Riza? It's Riza Four. And blowfish-headed people and clownfish-headed people and angelfish-headed people. Does it have the, 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 the totem that they uh, give everyone at Ryza if they want to fuck? Huh? In Ryza, they give you this little totem that means you want to you want to get mm -hmm. down. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, that's how it works. The, yeah, that's the pleasure. It's planet. sort of like wearing a uh, a I handkerchief in the that. back of your pants. Exactly, exactly like that. Uh. And I think Riker has one on his wall. Yeah. <laughs> like, no joke. <laughs> he, he has his special souvenir. Yeah. Because <laughs> he is always down. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. So that is it for this episode of Square Roots. But before we go, we have a little segment we need to get to, and it is called Squarely Against Woo-hoo. Jonathan. Ooh. What I am squarely, squarely against? against the Two Towers dungeon because that is the worst dungeon I've played in in any game for Square Roots. It was long, it was boring, it was frustrating until I just nuked everyone with magic all the time. And I, I didn't like it. Uh, Matthew? I will just try to inject a little bit of uh, positivity here and say that I'm roundly for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also that. roundly for Borga because he's a cute muscle yeti. Fucking muscle yeti get out of here vanessa what are you squarely (laughs) against against the hours of my life that i will never get back because i was playing this section of the game that went on forever however i am roundly for orphan and widows wandering through dangerous ruins (laughs) (laughs) looking for their dad (laughs) and for the space pirates who run into them and are just like oh there they are and the Oh, that's the little weird. girl is like, I'm scared, mommy. And she's like, oh, I know, but we just have to go through this haunted ruin. <laughs> they And even the party's like, ugh, them yeah, again? Yeah, they're getting sick of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and I really hope that that woman and her daughter are the final boss of the game. Oh, I hope so, too. That would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, God, what if? And what if they were like, and you never fucking helped us. We (laughs) tried so many times to let you prove your humanity, and you just ignored us (laughs) time after time. That would be pretty great, actually. And that would make a good, like, mechanic for a, uh, you know, morality system game. If you, like, keep running into these people, and they're really irritating, and you can either continue to be kind for them and perhaps do increasingly difficult chores for them or blow them off like an old fairy tale. Mm hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking of, too. Well, uh, before we uh, end the episode, I think that we have a la 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 letter. Yes. Who's going to read it, Vanessa? It's me. Uh, we have been getting some emails recently, and we love and delight in getting emails. Uh, we're not very good at getting emails. It turns out that all those years of not getting any <laughs> has made it very confusing for us when we actually do. So uh, we apologize if we have missed your email. Uh, we are going to figure something out. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, here's an email from Claire. Oh, I I cut out this, like, effusive praise part, and someone put it back in. All right, here it goes. You, you can skip it, it's uh, fine. Claire has some effusive praise, and uh, we appreciate that very much, uh, but we're not going to make the listeners suffer through it. You can uh, think of your own praise for us and send it in <laughs> to squareroutspodcast at gmail.com. But thank you, Claire. Claire wants to know... Um, she says, I have played Terranigma. Terranigma. Terranigma a few months ago, and it rocked my socks. Could you recommend any other esoteric slash hidden gem RPGs? Also, I'm worried about Jim. I hope all is well. Aw. Yeah, let's uh, answer part one first. Uh, has anybody played Terranigma? No. I haven't, but that's in like that series of games like uh Act Razor, Soul Blazer, Terra Enigma, and Illusion of Gaia. They're all by the same group of people. And they're all kind of similar, but apparently Terra Enigma is the best one, but it only came out in Japan and Europe. Oh. And uh I would really like to play that they, they, there's some unofficial boxed cu- releases of this uh but i don't think that's good enough for vanessa so mm, yep. ah boy so i haven't played it i would really like to um what about you anyone else played this uh, i have not and uh so i'm not sure if i have any recommendations that would be along those lines uh, i really like legend of mana i think i've mentioned it on this game before it's not like secret of mana at podcast. all podcast uh, oh yeah it's a podcast it's not a game um <laughs> nope but i like it and it's weird 
uh, and different. So you might like it too. And uh, I also love um, Hidden Episode Gem, uh, the great unreleased lost episode of Square Roots, uh, Uncharted 2, New Horizons. <laughs> or maybe it's called New Horizons, Uncharted 2. No, I think it's called Uncharted 2, New Horizons. Anyway, it was one of my very favorite games for the Super Nintendo. Uh, you play as one of six people who are sailing around the uh, world in the 1500s, and uh, you explore ports and find discoveries and fight pirates. John, did you have any hidden gems to recommend? Sure. Now, I don't know... I mean, Claire is digging into, like, Terra Enigma level, so I'm sure Claire has played Mother 3. But if not, that's definitely along those lines of a super weird, kind of hard to get uh, hidden gem. Uh, Soul Blazer by the same people is really fun. I haven't played Illusion of Gaia, so I can't recommend that. Also, uh, Shadow Run for the Super Nintendo. The Genesis one's good, too, but I think the Super Nintendo one's more aged better and is more approachable. Um that one is really fun and it's short. It's like maybe 15, 20 hours and, uh, really good. I think it's one of the best, uh, American RPGs of the 16 bit era. So that would be my recommendation. Matthew. Uh, I mean, I think you hit it all. There's a ton of, uh, great games, uh, by that same developer, Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia. Those are worth checking out. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think he hit it all there, John. So let's move on. Thank you, Claire, for your letter. We appreciate it. Uh, it was good to hear from you. Um, yeah, Tactics Ogre, let us clean together if you're into uh, Final Fantasy Tactics style uh, Ooh, strategy RPGs. That's one that I want to do for the show the next sky. year. Trails in the Sky uh, is a JRPG that you really – it should be coming, I think, to P- – I think it's coming to PS4 this year, actually, finally. Oh, nice. uh, but you can play it on Steam right now. Uh, that's a whole series of games that uh, hopefully we can get into one day. I don't know. The releases yeah. on those. I think the first one is actually just getting up there to be yeah, old Yeah, well, enough. I mean, the first one came out in, like, 2003 in Japan or 2005 in Japan, so that's fine. Like, yeah. Um, the American version came out in 20, 2009, I think, so we're good. Uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you again, Claire. We appreciate you writing in. And ladies and gentlemen, you can hit us uh, anytime you want at square roots podcast at gmail.com. Please do send in some emails. We've appreciated what we've received so far. And, uh, we would like to have more to read on upcoming episodes. Vanessa. Yeah. Is there something that you would like to say? No. Jonathan. The listener. Level up. Do we have a level up? <laughs> Josh Hass, you has leveled up. You've gained plus 10 ah, to crazy terrible. invention. You've <laughs> received the item Tuba Blaster. You've ranked up mask crafting to master. Thanks again for that mask. Josh, it was awesome, and thank you for the great review. He made an iTunes account just to review the podcast, which is a sacrifice I can never repay. <laughs> and the mask is great and scared a kid, so that was fun. All right, uh, before we go, let's plug the Patreon. Guys, we have a Patreon, and in fact, this is the first episode that I am recording on my brand new laptop that I purchased via Patreon funds uh, that we're, you know, going to be able to use to continue doing the show for the next the level, 17 level ups over. The level ups thousand over. years uh, until we've done every game ever made, RPG and otherwise, and have actually circled around and started doing games we've already done. Uh, once the sun burns out, you know, then Square Roots will end. But until then... What were we talking about? Oh, Patreon. Send yeah, us money, Patreon please. Plug. Hey, yeah, patrons, we... I just blew all that money you sent. Now send more. <laughs> I need a new headset. <laughs> oh, no. No, you don't get a thing next. I know. <laughs> Vanessa? Yep. Do you want to read the list? Who read it last time? I don't remember, but oh. I can do it. Okay. Here be the patrons. 
Aaron Bachman, Andrew Wyatt, Artie Pavlov, Ashley T, Bobby Midkiff, Brady A, Berman, Breegirth, Brian Pitt, Brian Stone, Brody Toy, Cameron Show, Cowman Moser, David Green, David Pascal, David Shook, Devin Sloan, Eric Garby, Floridian, no wait, I'm sorry, Florian, Florian. Jonas Kramer, uh, maybe a Floridian, mm-hmm. may not be, I do not know. G. Bailey, George, Armbuster, Go to Paris, France, Go Cry Wolf, Gregory, Jake Dickerson, James Hostetler, James Plett, Jonathan Lee, Joseph A. Rogers, Josh Anderson, Julia Zanella, Julian Titus, Justin Benoit, Justin Ham, my mom, Matt Jorgensen, MechaCon, Megan Sullivan, Meredith Anderson, Miguel Torres, Nathan Poirot, Nick, Owen Marble, Patrick, definitely not a robot Coover. Beep, 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 beep. Patrick W. Bears, <laughs> Race Jenkins, Randy Pierce, Rusty Kamada, Robert M. Pullum, Robert T., Ross Hartley, Ryan Miller, Sam Harrison, Samu Mitchell, Sean Wolf, Sh- Stu Skeel, Tom, Tracy Canoff, Tyler Petty, my mom, Ward Childress, Wonderswan, Xavier Krieger, and Cyril the Wolf. Ooh, there's some new names on there, too. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Sean. And thank you, Jonathan and Florian. I'm sorry that we destroyed your name. Mm-hmm. David. Armbuster. Armbuster. <laughs> You've equipped Armbuster. <laughs> John used Armbuster. It's super effective. <laughs> that That's what... Um, uh, Barrett's weapon in Final Fantasy VII is called, I think. The arm bruster? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so thank you, everybody. And uh, send us an email. You know our email address. It's squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. If you don't want to do that, go to our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast group for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or tweet us. Tweet at us at Square Roots Pod, where one of us will eventually answer you. <laughs> Our theme for this theory series is Ferd K's cover of Braveheart, the battle theme for Rogue Galaxy. Check out Ferd K's YouTube, his music on iTunes, Facebook page, and support Ferd K's music on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ferd K. And rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, where you listen to podcasts. Do you screenshot your review and post in the Facebook group or Twitter? I'll tell you how you leveled up. For Square Roots, I am John Johnny Brandon. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Vanessa. Bye. Bye. Oh boy, is it ever. Before we do that, we like a little segment called Level Up. If you do not like this segment, feel free to skip it. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to listen to it. <laughs> oh, John. Getting some frustrations out there. Yeah, clapping back at those iTunes reviews. <laughs> Stupid three-star review, I'll level you down. Oh no. Holy shit, cut all of this out. (laughs) Why? I think that what you were trying to say is, before we talk about the game, let's do a little segment where we all level up. John, take a minute. Vanessa, how did you level up today? (laughs) 